The first presentation is on the key elements of PRINCE2 that need to be applied to a project to increase the chances of success and to minimize the level of risk. So here are our key learning outcomes. At the end of this session, we hope you are able to discuss the principles of PRINCE2 and see how these principles apply to projects within our organizations and perhaps within our personal life. If we go back at the organization level, every organization has a mission statement. So for example, to increase the health of our population, to minimize the level of crime. So in order to deliver that mission statement, our senior managers come together on an away day and develop a series of strategies. These strategies can either lead to a program or a project. A program is a series of related projects. So these programs will then initiate a project. So a project to exist in the organization must either be approved by corporate management or program management. And as we'll see later on, within PRINCE2 there are four levels of management. And one level, which is corporate or program management, lies outside our projects. And here is a textbook definition of PRINCE2. A project is a temporary organization. By the word temporary, we mean it has a start, it has a middle, and it has an end. Organization is a group of people that are brought together to deliver one or more business products. And these individuals will take on a project role, which generally will be different from their business as usual and those products are delivered according to an agreed business case. And the business case answers the question why this project is being done. And when the work has been completed, the project and the project team are disbanded. So, as we see, PRINCE2 covers project management only and not program management. In addition, in order to manage a project, there are two elements that are required. One is we need a recipe book on how to manage the project, and the other are the people skills. Simply managing a project using the processes will not help our success. So not only do we need a process, we need to have some good leadership capabilities. PRINCE2 only covers the process on how to manage the project, but not the leadership capabilities and the detailed techniques. You may hear in your organization, but we use PRINCE2, but the project was still not successful. Well, we've used the process and the people that were involved in the project probably did not understand their roles and responsibilities very clearly and that is the reason why the project was unsuccessful. So projects are different to business as usual. So for example, organizing a dinner party is a project as opposed to cooking a meal for your family on an everyday basis. Organizing and taking children to school and going to work is business as usual. However, attending a PRINCE2 course is a project. So what makes projects different to business as usual? First of all, they are unique. So every project is unique. Every dinner party you organize is unique. Projects, as mentioned earlier, deliver products. Now, simply delivering the products is not going to be beneficial. What we need to do, as a result of delivering the products, we need to introduce change. 
we need to change the way that we work. Projects are temporary and also they are cross-functional. By this we mean you are working with people who you do not routinely work with. And hence, all of those elements will increase the level of uncertainties associated with the project. The key principles of project management, we believe, should already be applied to business as usual. And so, a lot of this is not going to be very difficult for you, I hope, to comprehend. So what is project management? According to Prince2, whenever we manage a project, we need to plan what we're going to do. We then delegate the work to different people to produce. And while the work is being done, we are monitoring progress and ensuring that everything is within our control parameters. So which elements of the project do we wish to control? Time cost, scope, benefit, risks and quality. What do we mean by scope? Scope is what is included and what is excluded and providing we can put mechanisms in place to ensure that these six elements are under control we again are going to increase our chances of success. What does Prince do actually cover? Prince 2 is based on seven key principles. These principles are supported by seven themes and our project is then delivered through seven processes. But the key element to all is tailoring because we need to tailor the method to the environment that we're working in and to the size of the project we are working to. And these are then identified as our four integrated elements. So what is the structure of PRINCE2? As mentioned, it is based on seven key principles, which we will discuss in a few moments, supported by seven themes and delivered by seven processes. So, what are the seven principles that we need to apply to our projects? The first is learn from experience, because whenever we start our project, one of the key things we believe we should ask is, have we done this project before? In our own organisation, in our own country, or in another country. And if that project has been done before, then what have we learned from it? We then have continued business justification. So, as you see, we have a project life cycle. It has a start, it has a middle, and it has a finish. That is termed a project life cycle. However, PRINCE2 covers the project life cycle plus some pre project preparation. And when you come to our course or during our material, we will refer to this as a project journey. So to recap, the project journey consists of the pre-project preparation, the initiation stage and the rest of the project. And the rest of the project, depending on the level of risks, can be broken down into further stages. So for this project, right at the very beginning, we need to see if there is a justification for this project to take place. We may have justification at the beginning, but not as we move through the rest of our journey. So the principle is continued business justification. So we need justification at the beginning and right throughout the project, we must keep asking the question, is the project worthwhile? The next principle is defined roles and responsibility. As we mentioned earlier, projects bring together a group of people. It's absolutely imperative 
that these group of people understand what their roles and responsibilities are. Because as you go through our training, you will see that there are three levels of management within our project. The direction level, the management level and the delivery level. In some projects, you may be at the direction level. In another project, you may be at the delivery level. So it's important for us to understand what our roles and responsibilities are and where the accountability for decision making lies. The next principle is focus on products. Because as mentioned earlier, projects are there to deliver business products according to our business case. It's important that we deliver these products that are fit for purpose. Because if these products are not fit for purpose, then the users will not use them. And if the users do not use our products, then we will not deliver the benefits in the reasons that we're doing the project. And so throughout the course of our journey, it's important that we understand what will make the products fit for purpose. And when these products have been delivered, we test them or review them to make sure they are what we ask them to be. Projects can be very large. So every project must be broken down at least into two management stages. They are the initiation stage and the rest of the project. And as mentioned earlier, depending on the level of risk, the project, the rest of the project can be broken into further management stages. So what it does at the end of each stage, it gives us an opportunity to review how the journey is going how the previous stage has gone. Is our business justification still valid? If it is, we move on to the next stage. If not, at this point in here, we either change direction or prematurely close the project. So during the stage, our next principle is to manage by exception. Because projects, this stage can be 11 weeks long. One of the things we need to make sure is we are not spending considerable amount of time in meetings. So we need to replace the meetings by regular reports. In addition, it is very difficult to predict the future. So if things go marginally out of our agreement, we should not need to always report to the next level up. So what we recommend is you allow a little bit of leeway, either side of the agreed time, cost, etc. This within PRINCE2 is termed a tolerance. So to manage by exception, we need to put the mechanisms in place that allow us to get regular feedback on how the projects are going, and in addition, we set levels of tolerances. And finally, the last principle is to tailor. It's important we tailor the project to suit the project environment. This may be a very large project or a very small project. In addition, this project may take place within our own organization only or across multiple organizations. So it's important any size project in any environment and in any industry adheres and follows all seven of these principles. And these principles are then supported by seven themes. So for example, the business justification is supported by a theme called the business case. So within a project, we have a justification. The business case records the reasons for doing the project. It has the benefits, the disbenefits, the times, the cost, etc., which allows us to compare what we are investing to what we're going to get out of it. In addition, another theme, for example,
the risk theme supports continued business justification because should the level of risk go up, the justification may no longer be valid, in which case we either prematurely close the project or we change direction. The principle, defined roles and responsibilities, is supported by the organization theme. So within PRINCE2, the organization theme talks about various roles. The executive, the senior users, the senior suppliers, project assurance, project manager, team managers. All roles must be identified and fulfilled. But what Prince recommends is the fact that you do not need a separate person fulfilling every single role. So in some cases, what we may do is to combine the roles and for example, the executive and the senior user could be the same person. But it's important we have an organizational structure clearly identified. Supporting our theme, sorry, our principle called focus on products is the quality theme. The quality theme is to ensure that the products we deliver are fit for purpose. So it's important that for every product we talk to our users, we understand what will make it fit for purpose. And so the quality theme is about understanding the customer needs and then testing or reviewing the products to ensure that they are fit for purpose. Also supporting focus on products is the plans theme. And the plans theme is about what products are to be delivered, by whom, how, at what cost and to what timescales. So as you can start to see, each principle is supported by one or more themes. Not all the principles are supported by all the themes and not all the themes support all the principles. The next theme again is managed by stages. Supporting managed by stages is our plans theme. So within a project, we have a project plan, a stage plan, a team plan. And as we discussed earlier, that the rest of the project can be broken down into multiple stages, depending on the level of risks. And each stage plan is planned in details towards the end of the previous stage. The next principle was managed by exception. The progress theme is where we discuss the mechanisms that we can put in place, i.e. our regular highlight reports from the project manager to the project board, regular checkpoint reports from the teams to the project manager. And providing these are in place, the respective levels of management can manage by exception. In addition, in a project, we have several changes. Rather than these changes always being approved by the most senior level of management, we can delegate the change to another level. For example, a change authority. And so both of these themes will support manage by exception. So I hope you found this presentation useful to give you an idea of what is a project, where it fits in into the organizational context, and what does Prince2 say that we can do to help increase our chances of success, i.e. to follow all seven principles, and supporting these principles are these themes.